Hello everyone. My name is Noah James Gonzalez. Friends and families call me Nonong Gonzalez. A name given to me by my grandpa which I like and a name which established my identity. I invite you together with my mom Angelia, Grandma Nancy, Tita Gian, and my grandpa Jimmy to come travel with me as I journey around the world to see the beautiful places its people and culture, and taste its native delicacies. Our Lady of Lords is a Roman Catholic title of the Blessed Virgin Mary, venerated in honor of the Marian apparition that occurred in 1858 in the vicinity of Lords and branch. The first of these is the operation of 11 February 1858 when 14-year-old Bernadette Soberos told her mother that a lady spoke to her in the cave of Masabelli, a kilometer and a half mile from the town, while she was gathering the firewood with her sister and a friend. Similar operation of the lady were reported on 17 occasions that year until the climax revelation of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception took place. In 18 January 1862, the local bishop of Tar Tarbis, Bertrand Severi Lawrence, endorsed the veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Lords. On July 3, 1876, Pope Pius IX officially granted a canonical coronation to the image that used to be in the courtyard of what is now part of the Rosary Basilica. The image of Our Lady of Lords has been widely copied and reproduced in shrines and homes, often in garden landscapes. Soberos was later canonized as a Catholic saint by Pope Pius XI in 1933. After church investigation confirmed her visions, a large church was built at the site. Lourdes is now a major Marian pilgrimage site. Within France, only Paris has more hotels than Lourdes. Soberos described the apparition as O Petito Damicello, or a tiny maiden, of about 12 years old. Soberos insisted that the apparition was no taller than herself, at 4 feet 7 inches tall. Soberos was diminutive even by the standards of other portly nourished children. Soberos described that the apparition as dressed in a flowing white robe with a blue sash around her waist. This was the uniform of a religious group called the Children of Mary, which on account of her poverty, Soberos was not permitted to join, although she was admitted after the apparition. Her Aunt Bernardi was a longtime member. The statue that currently stands in the niche within the Grotto of Masabel was created by the lioness sculptor Joseph Hughes Pavest in 1864. Although it has become an iconographic symbol of Our Lady of Lords, it defects a figure which is not only older and taller than Soberos description but also more in keeping with orthodox and traditional representation of the Virgin Mary. And seeing the statue, Soberos was profoundly disappointed with this representation of her vision. February 11, 1858, Soberos went with her sister to Neck 
and neighbor Jan Abadi to collect some firewood and bones in order to buy some bread. After taking off her shoes and stocking to wait through the water near the grotto of Masabel, she said she heard the sound of two gusts of wind. But the trees and bushes nearby did not move. A wild rose in a natural niche in the grotto, however, did move. Soberus tried to make the sign of the cross, but she could not, because her hands were trembling. The lady smiled and invited Soberos to pray the rosary with her. Soberos tried to keep this a secret, but Tonette told her mother. After parental cross-examination, she and her sister received corporal punishment for their story. Three days later, February 14, Soberos returned to the grotto. She had brought holy water as a test that the apparition was not of evil origin. The second time was the following Sunday. Then I started to throw holy water in her direction. And at the same time, I said that if she came from God, she was to stay. But if not, she must go. She started to smile and bow. This was the second time. Soberus' companions are said to have become afraid when they saw her in ecstasy. She remained ecstatic even as they returned to the village. On February 18, she spoke of being told by the lady to return to the grotto over a period of two weeks. She quoted the apparition. The lady only spoke to me the third time. She told me also that she did not promise to make me happy in this world, but in the next. Soberos was ordered by her parents to never go there again. She went anyway, and on February 24, Soberos related that the apparition asked for prayer and penitence for the conversion of sinners. The next day, she said the apparition asked her to dig in the ground and drink from the spring she found there. This made her disheveled and some of her supporters were dismayed. But this act revealed the stream that soon became a focal point for pilgrimages. Although it was muddy at first, the stream became increasingly clean. As word spread, this water was given to a medical patients of all kinds and many reports of miraculous cu cures followed. Seven of these cures were confirmed by lacking any medical explanation by Professor Burgess in 1860. The first person with a certified miracle was a woman whose right hand had been deformed as a consequence of an accident. Several miracles turned out to be a short-term improvement or even hoaxes. In church and government, officials became increasingly concerned. The government fenced off the grotto and issued stiff penalties for anybody trying to get near the off-limits area. In the process, lords became a national issue in France, resulting in the intervention of Emperor Napoleon III with an order to reopen the grotto on October 4, 1858. The church had to decide to stay away from the controversy altogether. Soberos, knowing the local area well, managed to visit the barricaded grotto under cover of darkness. There, on 25 March, she said she was told, I am the Immaculate Conception. On Easter Sunday, April 7, her examining doctor stated that Soberos in ecstasy was observed to have held her hands over a lit candle without sustaining harm. On July 16, Soberos went for the last time to the grotto. I have never seen her so beautiful before, she reported. The charts faced with nationwide question, decided to institute an investigative commission on November 17, 1858. On January 18, 
1860, the local bishop finally declared that the Virgin Mary did appear indeed to Bernadette Soberos. These events established the Marian veneration and lords, which together with Fatima is one of the most frequented Marian shrines in the world, and to which between 4 and 6 million pilgrims travel annually. As I post here, I hope you enjoy our ride. Don't forget to watch my next episode and please hit the red subscribe button below for it means so much for me. Until next time, thank you so much.